So the formal definition of a delegate is a type safe function pointer. And if you're just like anybody else on the earth, the first time that you look at this definition, even though it is the correct definition, it's enough to make your eyes glaze over. So what we're gonna do is we're going to break it apart step by step and explain what exactly this means. So type safe, you're probably already familiar with type safe. We'll, we'll let type safe go for a second. That one's kind of easy, but you're probably not familiar with what a function pointer is. And if you come from C++, you might already know, but let me just explain it to you. So let's just take the most simple method, the most simple function that we can possibly imagine. It's just going to say run, there's going to be a void, there's code that goes in there. Hypothetically, we will run the program. Now there's many things that we can do with methods and there's almost like states that methods can be in. A method can be running and a method can also just be stored in memory. And whenever you use the parentheses, you are causing a function to run. It is executing. It is now a car that is in motion. And a car that is in motion cannot be put in a storage unit, so to speak. If something is in, if something is in motion, it's in motion and nothing else is going on. But let's go to the second part here. What happens when a function is not in motion? What's going on? Well, it's being stored in memory. And depending on which language that you're using and depending on if it's an anonymous function, it could be going on the heap, it could be going in some type of V table, but it's key point, it's being stored in memory and it's not being executed at all. But when we actually want to store our functions, how do we type them? And boom, you've just understood type safe function pointer. A function pointer is going to point to a function that is not running, a, a function that is being stored in memory. And type safe is, you guessed it, you're just going to slap type safety on it. But how exactly do we do that? How do we take a var and how do we actually put type checking on a function that is not running? We're gonna do that step by step and we're going to do, do so over in VS Code. So let's go ahead, let's hop into VS Code and let's do some coding. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here and I'm going to create the most simple function that I possibly can. It's not going to take in any return or it's not going to return anything. It's not going to take in any parameters and all I'm going to do is just go into here and I'm just gonna say CW and this is simple just to kind of be funny. So what was the whole entire point of creating this? If you were to type this, just as kind of like a brain buster here for a second, what would you, and without using any of the cheat codes from IntelliSense, how exactly would you type this function? What, could you type it as an int? Is this a string? Well, this is kind of a trick question because it is kind of hard to tell. So we'll just go ahead into here and we'll use the cheat code and we'll automatically just get the type. The type is an action. And you may be asking yourself, well, I came to this video for delegates, Teddy. This isn't a delegate. Well, actuality, a action is a delegate. You see, back in the old days, you actually had to go in and create all of these words on your own. You had to create each and every delegate through something that looks a lot like this. And I'll just go ahead down here and I'm going to make one very quickly for you. You just had to, you used to have to do something a lot like this. And we'll just call our delegate super custom and it's going to take in an int of X. And instead of having these actions and these other things called funks, you had to do this each and every time. And eventually it just got to the point where people just said, why don't we just have pre-made delegates so that we don't have to do all this crazy typing and thus action and funct are, were born. But an action is an action. We've already learned about that, but how exactly do we make a function? Or what about the other keyword that you commonly see sometimes called a funk? So I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to call this logger funk and this is going to take in an, uh, an int of x, and also we're just going to make another arrow function. I'm gonna bring this down here, go ahead, put a semicolon, and I'm going to just return the x plus two, or two just like this, just to, I don't know, have some, some other number to work with. And 
Uh, here's another example. How exactly would you type this? What would you put right here for the var? We are so accustomed to using var, a lot of times we actually want to type this. And if you hover over it and you use the little magical IntelliSense, you're going to see a funct. And this funct is going to be, it's going to contain these brackets right here. And all this means is that this is the parameter and this is the return. And if you want to go ahead into here and you want to type this for yourself, all you have to do is do the same exact thing. And these brackets do look comp complicated, but just remember on the right side is the return and on the left side is the parameters. So you may be saying to yourself, Teddy, I came here for a delegate. Show me a delegate right now. And all that you would have to do to create the delegate of your own or create a delegate of your own is to go up here, go ahead, wipe out your super or your function, your funk right here. And we're going to put in super custom and think about it. Instead of having the pre-made actions, a lot of times you do want to be more specific. And that's where these custom delegates come in and they work exactly the same. But instead of having the brackets up here that you had with funk, you're going to do all of the type checking within this little one liner down here with the word delegate in it. And this is going to type check our params. This is going to type check the actual return. And if you do something like type put void right here, it's going to break it because it's going to enforce those rules on that delegate. And once again, you use delegates like this in certain cases where you want a very specific name because sometimes custom names can describe things in a lot better manner manner compared to action or funk and to just kind of get you off the ground and help to solidify things a little bit easier we're going to go through a couple real world examples of when you're going to see delegates and first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to create a pretty simple link statement so going to, going to go into here use i or e numerable not i enumerable we're going to create a range of numbers one through ten just to kind of mess around with and we're going to select them which is basically a map in JavaScript if you don't know what a select is. And for each number within this uh, enumerable right here or this link statement, we are going to go through and times it by three. And then we're going to turn it into a list. So if you're just looking at this, it's really difficult to tell kind of like what's going on underneath the hood. So if you go in through here, this is going to take in, in this is going to take in a start. This is going to take an account. But a lot of times with these link statements, it's very difficult to kind of decipher what's going on. And you can see in here, look what we have. We have a delegate. We have a func, which is going to take in an int and it's going to return an int of a selector. And this might not make much sense to you. But look at this, this funk right here. So this is a funk that takes in the exact same thing. If I go into here, I say int, and uh, we have a funk of int and int. Just imagine that this exact same thing is being passed into this select statement. This type of funk, this type of delegate is what's going to be enforced when you pass it into it. And that's the whole entire point. A funk is actually going to be typed on the select and if you hover over it you can see the actual delegate and you can almost use it as sort of a blueprint or an idea of what is going to be passed into this actual function and you can kind of mentally conceptualize a blueprint instead of having nothing to go on and you can do this by looking inside of it looking for the delegate and thinking to yourself oh this is going to require an int this is going to return an int whatever type of function that i'm going to pass in here is going to look a lot like this and this is pretty much the exact same thing if you think about it. This is the type of function that can be passed into the select. And if you ever get, like I said, if you ever get lost and you ever don't know what should be passed into one of these, if you just look at the func or if you just look at the delegate inside of it, you, you can get a good mental picture of what's supposed to be going on. But let's talk about it from a code point of view when you are going to be writing the code instead of using other people's code. Probably the most common is going to be in the form of a callback and callbacks are ubiquitous and I am going to just call this call call right here and this is going to take in and this is actually going to consume a delegate. This is going to take in a function. A function is going to be passed inside of it. If I go into here and <clears throat> I type this out. This is actually a callback. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, hop over back into the whiteboard and I'm gonna explain kind of things in more depth. 
So a callback is very similar to a Trojan horse. Whether you are thinking of the computer type or you're thinking of the Greek allegory or the Greek story of what a Trojan horse is, it, what's going to happen is that you are going to pass a function inside of another function. And if you think about it, if, if you were to pass a function into a function, you could only do so if the function is not running. So if I were to go into here and just run call call, so we're going to run call call and we are going to pass in just some other, we'll just go into here and all that I'm going to do is just pass in this right here. We'll say console.write line and we'll log callback just like this. It really doesn't matter what type of function that you pass into another function, but what's going to happen is that it's going to go inside of the actual is going to go inside of the actual parameters right here and then it's going to be passed into the other function. And key point, this function is not running. It's just like any other form of data. Unless the function is actually running, it's not you can you can pretty much do anything with it you can store it in variables you can pass it to other functions you can return it from other functions but as soon as you get right here what's going to happen is that this function is going to start running and you passed it just like a variable and anything that you passed into it is going to be executed at this point it's almost like a ditto in Pokemon. A ditto in Pokemon can change to any form. It can be literally anything. And this actual function parameter here is almost like a ditto. It can turn into any type of function that you pass into it. And as soon as it reaches this parentheses right here, it's going to come out of memory and actually start executing. And with all of the knowledge that we've just built up, let's go down here and let's actually pass our uh, logger action into our call call function and let's log it out. Let's see if we can get it to execute right here. So I'm just going to go into here. I'm going to say call call and all that I'm going to do is pass in that previous logger action that we made up top and we're just going to run it and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to say dot net watch run and what should be logged out is this is simple and let's see it's going to take a little while Yep, this is simple. Congratulations, you guys just learned what delegates are. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.